Welcome back, guys, to Trails to Azure, where there is a small bit of post-game for us to do. With our story complete, I, of course, played through the game again to get our bonding events that you saw in episode 172, it should have been. All the extra ones that I didn't get from a normal, natural playthrough, not knowing how to uh, pass out the bonding points exactly. But just past that point, there is the option or a few extra boss battles, the hardest monsters in the game, the super boss, to come after that. So with that said and with that done, there was one other thing found along the way. A little bit of extra dialogue from Mariabelle during a scene. So let's see that first of all. Hello. Good day, Lady Mariabelle. And how are you faring? Rather well, actually. I did get a kick out of your little sideshow, or whatever you'd like to call it. My, but that does please me to hear. I'm grateful you humored my antics by allowing me to borrow your most precious collection. The Meister is an acquaintance of mine, yes, but I've never seen so many of his masterpieces in one place. They were beauty at its finest, every one. You have my thanks. Not at all. You seem to have treated them well enough, to my mild relief. Leaving even a single scratch, however, would have earned you an exclusive invite to my merry, merry castle. A pity I didn't have the pleasure. Let's be thankful the men and women of the SSS spared us all from that fate. Mm-hmm. So, with that out of the way, what do you plan to do now? Alas, I'm afraid what I told them is the truth. I intend to depart from Crossbell quite soon. My services are required in the Empire. Things are getting quite dramatic just across the border, you see. Is that so? Then I suppose I should count myself lucky you made the time for this. As for that project of yours, I'll be watching with great interest from the Imperial side of things and I look forward to your future in the society as well. I wouldn't be so hasty. Nothing is set in stone quite yet, though I do hope we get to speak again before long. Phantom Thief B. Oh, I'm already counting the minutes, my dear. That was our extra little scene. Randomly popped up in the middle of me running through really fast. So with that scene saw, we now come to... Ursula Road, of course, where we landed our Merc about the first time and started off on our Find Our Friends adventure. However, as you can see, there is now an open extra passage here. Throughout the game, throughout New Game Plus, they were actually shielded by a blue light. I'll obviously put it in there to in now. But it seems that, of course, once you reach the final, uh, the finale, it unlocks. So beyond these are bosses, the strongest ones we have fought so far. Let's see exactly what it is we have to face. What exactly is that's in here? Any chests or anything? Or just straight up monsters? Monsters we've seen before, that's for sure. There is a monster harboring immense power here. <laughs> well, one of the things I'd say about the monsters, the Grendels here, is that they are... Um, they aren't stopping. As in, they are just going ahead of literally everyone. Endlessly. Do I try to get an S-Craft out to begin with and see how that works out? We've always got Wazi there. I should probably use Tio on top of that. Would not be a bad idea. I don't really want to move you forward is the thing. I can always... Strike Bell to move Lloyd forward so we can get in the middle of... All of our yes. melee friends over here. Which may help us out just a little bit. Let's see. It's a critical to steal. A lot of HP didn't really go down when you look at it. We can hit everyone, but they've obviously got the HP to survive this no matter what. The weird pause always comes out. It, of course, makes sense to get a zero filled up in case they do anything super special. Now, we've got another critical that we could steal, but unless Lloyd has the, the points to do so, which he definitely stole. Will these go down without me being able to scan them? I'm pretty much sure someone will survive, right? Yeah, they had no 
problem surviving, which is actually very upsetting. <laughs> they have a lot of HP and they're going to get a lot of attacks in a row. Due to the nature of things here. Even if we wanted to use burst, it's not going to come along at. Well, actually, somehow Tio missed that too. My god! What's the speed on these things? I mean, equally if they attack Lloyd, Lloyd is completely fine and will not get hit no matter what. So if they are just fully melee, Lloyd just counters them anyway, which is just... Kind of funny, you've yes. got to say. Okay, we, we were actually able to do a, f do a move. I could do a thing. I may as well battle scope one of them. A long-lived demon from ancient times, Jaeger's domesticated it and its unfathomable strength. 116 is our foe. Well, our you characters are around 1,718 at this point, I think, fairly. So that's nice and all. Lloyd gets a second go. I don't think we can use Burning Heart, so it is just a case of a normal melee attack. I mean, ideally, in terms of, like, weaknesses, they're not really super weak to anything in particular, but Arjun Ark will do the job. In fact, I wouldn't be unsurprised if Arjun Ark is just exactly what we need to finish up the entirety of everything here. Facing melee enemies as our first enemy is a, a pretty easy go of it, you could say. So what can we cast before other people can? Well, I'm expecting these ones to go down. I'm expecting this one to stay up. Oh, I didn't actually realize that was purely ahead of Tio. Well, that's one done. So Tio's definitely going to take down that one. Obviously, I can't really cast much in the way of that here. I can always cross Mirage or Strike Bell to get you up again. But to be honest, I think you're just done for at this point. Now, there is one thing to mention about, of course, playing through the game again. Everyone in this party, well, everyone who's in the four in action, all now have their Zemurian weapon. So they're all super attack stacked. While he now has his armor... So his HP is high anyway, but his defense is pretty good and he gets an extra bit of uh, stats no matter what, ADF. So at a high level, we should be able to face all threats. It was quite easy running through the game again. And I have bumped up the difficulty. So that's a thing to say as well. So with Randy leveling up, Visha leveling up, Tio leveling up, we get a little bit more power. Before we continue on, Monster Exterminated. Obtain a Zemurian or Shard for our trouble. I don't even think I actually need it, is the one thing I'd say. We, uh, we have everyone weaponed up. I guess I could give one to Randy because he's in the back party and all. But still, there are more of these monsters to kill. So let's get on our way. So I have made it to Destination 2. And for those curious about the uh, weapon stats that we managed to obtain, the Exis Ray here gets critical plus 20% accuracy, 100% strength, 700. And whilst he's seventh arm here, so just a little critical boost over his base gear. It's invasion and strength, 700 as well. Things like the uh, Divine Zero Orb, they were story based as well. So they got taken away from us during uh, the main gameplay. But the Testaments card here gives ATS plus 20 to Wazi 2. Not that we're actually using him to cast, but it gives a little extra power all the same. So we'll take that. So yes, I did use a guide to get back up to this point. I'll just show you my save files to say how long it actually took. So as you can see here, it took 128 hours playtime. When we actually finished the main game itself, we were at 100 hours playtime. So it still took a day to play back at the fastest of turbos possible. So it's a crazy undertaking, but you can do it too if you wish to. But our shield was there over this bit. Our path takes us into here. Our next foe awaits. What is it? So we're going into whole new areas. No chests or anything, though. It's a very lovely place here. Ooh, that, 
That thing looks problematic, I have to say. Well, let's exterminate. I would like to know what you are, Lucifuge. Do I start by casting or do I start by trying to figure things out? Final guess, scope up. These are Lucifuges. 40k HP. A pestilent king among kings has a soft, murky body and counts down to ruin and destruction. Very weak to a well. The weaker sister water, so Tio can get some action in here. Speaking of Tio. This is, of course, how we figure out how things are going to go down. Swarm of evil. It's not AoE, single target. Can reach anyone on the field, maybe? No? I think I've just realized something. I don't actually have Keeper on Lloyd anymore to take the aggro. Because, of course, you can only get the Master Courts at the point where Dudley rejoins the group. If I had that, life would be pretty good at this point. But that is everyone block, so I'll take that, I guess. Put an adamantine guard down. <laughs> Looks like we are going to get hit a fair bit, but we do have a fair amount of status guard to go with things, so it's not like it's terrible. Now, in terms of how we work on the remainder here... I take it they're not going to move that much. And we're about to start taking damage on everyone but Lloyd. <coughs> Which is uh, not a tiny amount of damage. So Lloyd doesn't really know what he'd be doing at this point. <laughs> when you think about everything. We want to be doing the most damage possible. And that's a good amount of physical to like spread around, but it's really the spells we're going to need to start launching. We got a variety of turns in a row. We've got a critical coming up if Wazi wants to hit it. Just wondering if we can get a. Hmm, where should I be hitting this out to? Makes sense to kill the targets that are already going down quite nicely, doesn't it? Just wondering if we can get a burst. But then we might not even need it. Even on a critical, it's not the biggest hit in the world we could have got. I do wonder which of these is actually more damage, but... We got some criticals from our opponents coming up. And the question is, is there any of these have arts cancelled? The energy sphere is... Nasty, it's a spell attack. Tio is in danger. That's a physical. So we actually took some nasty hits from all of that. But with three down, we should be good to keep on going. Spark Dine, unfortunately, is not going to hit multiple targets, which is kind of what we wanted. We are going to hit multiple targets with the water spell coming up. I could also hit, like, an auto breath. Just instantly get another turn. Make sure that Tio is not in any death range. Then start dropping all the spark dimes that we can possibly manage on our opponent. Let's 
One down's pretty good. Yes. It's just you and me. Thank you for attacking Lloyd. Because we get that extra damage there. I will fix his master courts, draw the damage onto us. Life will be very good after that point. And you're out. Alright, another one down. Level ups for anyone. Tia was 119 and Randy is 119. Skipping ahead of the group. And another Zamurian ore shard is claimed. Randy will have an ultimate weapon. Right, let's move on to our next target because that's not a fishing spot. So our next chest brings us to the wetlands. Keeper now equipped. As a blue barrier was blocking us from going over here into the faded out area of the map. And into a completely different area. Wait, you look a little bit fancier than before. Pallet swaps are to be scared. Or to make me scared. That is six foes. That is six foes. Right, with Keeper on now, Lloyd should be able to draw a lot of our enemies towards us. Let's not use Burning Heart twice, though. Of course, we can't drag them in. Ooh. Well, that's, uh... That's concerning. What are you casting? Oh, we're AoE to everyone. I almost wonder if I should just hit burst. <laughs> well, to be honest, we get Tio's turn before any of these spells go off. So we could leave it for now. Because a spell is usually very bad for us to be hit by. I mean, we can straight up impede, which means we can impede with you as well, because you've got Trinity Card. Trinity Card would work really well on this, because it would block a large amount. Now, this is what we want, melee attacks. Because now Lloyd just gets a load of free damage. Okay, we do not have enough people to block all of these arts. So burst might be the way to play. We're not on red yet. So let's get an analyze off. A devil of devastating power that came to this world for a rift in space. The great Satan. Dance of the moon's coming out, so we get buffed up speed-wise. CP isn't bad either, so I can't hit all these targets, so... I mean, of course, we could zero field. But I think that straight up cancels their arts anyway. So that's 20k damage. Now, if I just use a Fortuna to buff up Theo a bit more. Space is the element we want to be hitting. And we have Last Disaster, but I think I'm probably better off with Golden Halo in terms of hitting AoE. Yeah, we're just going to try to nuke them down in a couple of attacks here. I'm pretty sure Wazi can come in with a finisher no matter what. Because we will also have the follow-up turns after that. Now, you can hit uh, Lass's Astra as well, but I'm just wondering if we just Fortuna again. Does Tio get uh, another super turn? Would it have been best to have actually 
gone with you. Okay, Tio does not get another super turn, but we can make that happen. Okay, no one's casting. I'm wondering about, like, building up my stuff again. <laughs> I feel like I shouldn't move in case we need to, like, cancel. But then, of course, you'll be using thing anyway. Okay, we got two. To be honest, may as well just bust it. He's got his ATS buff twice. That's two targets. Now we've got one left that we can just normal melee or s -craft. Yes, much more of a problem when we come against spellcasters. Those are the true threats. Now, yeah, because everyone's getting a lot more experience of their level 118, we should be seeing uh, a couple of people hit 120 by the look of it. There we do indeed. Lloyd, Wazi, Ellie, and Risha. even more HP. So with a third target slain, two more remain. Let's go, to, go over to number four. So our fourth set of foes lie inside the Geofront Sector C right at the start. Next to a first treasure chest, there was a barrier over here which has now been overcome. I don't like the fact that these monsters are underneath the city, especially when it's these monsters. These were really dodgy when we fought them in the Azur Tree. <laughs> and I don't think I have Burst. I could have probably fought some things and regenerated some Burst first. But if they're all just going to cast spells like this... Well, that's our nightmare. <coughs> now we've got this Flame Jet 2 coming out. That's nasty. Technically... Between Lloyd and Wazi, they could probably interrupt most of these opponents. So the question is to scan or not to scan. To spell or not to spell. Because these guys are fire guys and I'm pretty sure you're the attack choice. The issue with spellcasters, of course. Is that we can't evade tank them. Oh, okay, we can actually hit everyone, so Lloyd's attack there was a bit... Meh, I guess. Uh, that's a lot of attacks just randomly next, you know what I mean? Alright, do I have anything that I can use that comes up ahead of everyone? And allows me to go again. Because, like, if I do that, I can take the extra turn off the enemy there, which is really handy. Breath doesn't. Tira does. Let's just heal Tio, then. We're going to manipulate some turn order. I was going to say, I don't think I can do it twice, though. So someone's going to get two turns. And if it's a spell, it could be incredibly nasty. What the hell is with the turn order that's come up there? In terms of, like, uh, my master, what does it do? Accelerates AT attacks and crafts. Delay the enemy. Ruin of transience. Using a master art activates a special effect. Oh yeah, I haven't done that on the party this time. So I can actually make myself go first if I use that. Yeah. Probably the moment to find things out, isn't it? That means Ellie gets to go twice. Sorry. 
or that means Tio gets to use this twice. I haven't got a scan yet. I think this is legitimately the best use of Lloyd, considering the fact that I'm pretty sure he was useless against these guys before. Oh, this is terrible damage! I wanted to see a little bit more than that. Well, if I use it again... I can always get Tio using zero field in the near future. I mean, it's... It's damaging! Damaging is good. We could also speed you up to get the thing. But to be perfectly honest with you, I think that... Uh, because you can't really go again here and I want to zero field with you, really. You just, like, go off to the side and battle scope some dude? Just wondering if that will help. A mystical flame-clad creature originated from ancient times can melt even still. Level 121. We've barely done any damage to him. It is war as a weakness, but not as much as space. Time. That's the one. Space 2. Okay, well, nothing's casting a big spell, so I can get this Fortuna down. Now, with you, I'm kind of like, you should stay still. I want the least amount of delay that could possibly be taking place for you. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, very no. I think I kind of have to do the thing. Right, turn that with even my lower delay, I couldn't hit the stuff. Yeah, he can't even dodge that. Oh, because he's casting. Oh, Lloyd's in the... Lloyd's in a little bit of a pickle. I think Lloyd's dead, oh. Oh, no, he gets revived. Ha-ha! <laughs> Suck it, my enemies. I've used the weirdest factor of my attacks. Uh, this is so A whole zero damage. Grants <laughs> magic reflect. Oh, it's still 150% damage. Oh, that sounds good. Why not use that? Oh, because I've still got Lloyd's one active. Great. Um, Lloyd. You're dying there, Lloyd. Don't worry, I've got ways to to help slightly, topping up everyone, I guess. Um, don't know if that will help on you. It saves you from one attack. Right, well, I see we get a rush and so we don't get the big delay from using this. Uh, we need to take out a group, but there's not really a good grouping. And this means I've run out of stuff to use Mass Impede. Uh-oh! Might have to feed Wazi a powder at this point. <laughs> it's like it does no damage! <laughs> hey Lloyd, do you want to stop doing that thing? That'd be great. Thanks. Cheers. 
A normal Zeram powder. And is all I need to do interrupts. Art. Art. Seems like Lloyd's in massive danger again. Well, I think Lloyd's dead, no matter which way you shake it here. So I may as well get one thing in. Oh, why that? I want the big spell. Well, I guess no matter what, this is going to stop Lloyd from using Thingy. However, the damage is going to start to come in everywhere else. As long as I can, like, take down one or so. Maybe I should have used Lloyd's s -Graph. Was that a possibility during channeling that spell? Again, there's interactions with that that I actually have no clue how to use. Right, so I'm pretty sure that Tio can just res Lloyd. So I'm just wondering if Rune of Tempest is the way to play it now. Or if that might now just delay Ellie till the end of time. It's only a singular case of Art Reflect. We have to go through all the other stuff first. Oh, that's terrible. Okay, Wazi well, should be able to counter these ones this time. Kind of does work for us. Um, use Genesis Flood instead, see if that does any worse damage. Okay, so I've managed to impede everyone. That's something. <laughs> With no ATS buffs going on. Didn't even do that much little damage compared to Eskaton, did it? As long as they end up behind my party, I'm okay. Yeah, there we go. Look, this is this is an excellent turn, apart from that. Apart from that. Okay. How to work with the rest of this, you know what I mean? Hey, to Four and eleven damages. Too poor. Yeah. And he had ATS up buff. I mean, we do more damage anyway because of that card on. Tio's, uh, Tio's building up to another zero field. Seven. Okay, we can block all these again now. We seem to be in a good speed factor, you could say. Yeah, 400. Okay, extend cost that. Do I want to end or extend? Let's extend. Which doesn't art, right? Wow, terrible. Yeah. I mean, it's beautiful. I love it. Okay, I have zero field. But I'm slightly down on EP. 
There's a critical coming up. Just wondering if we could challenge up Ellie and let her critical out. Or can you wait? Can you S-craft someone in a thingy? Yes. Does that break them out of it? If we can kill like these three, or at least just two of them, we'll be fairly well off. Whilst well, he just needs to cart them. Camp Master again, obviously. Uh, then have stun break. And if I do anything, I just can't dodge. Feel like I'm better off just fueling Tio at this point. So we're looking at this. This on a critical. And hope for the best in terms of damage. <laughs> this is the super boss. Okay, we got we got one. I mean, I'm wondering if the Trinity card will actually kill some guys. <laughs> no. <laughs> Can't let Tio die, remember? Wow, look at the target. Wait, that's a new one. Oh my god. <laughs> this guy's like, I am going to live. There is nothing you could do about it. I am going to live forever. <laughs> Two of them are down. At this point, we should be okay. At this point, we should be good. We just need to get Tio back casting spells. Uh, Lloyd doing whatever he can, really. Tapeta Lucida? Okay. Now you're going straight for Tio. I mean, you know she's the one who's going to kill you. Ikuo. And Tio gets to go before him. Hey, it was 60 damage. Yes. It's more than I could have hoped for. Hey. All right, Tio will be charged up to two levels of ATS up. That should be sorted. Putting Tio on the dual spot. The planning. <laughs> Art steal 150 percent extra damage. Art reflect on everyone. That was a long and torrid fight.
If I look at their defensive values, I don't think an S craft festival would have helped me out. A 4.0 average was obtained. I'll take it. That's a lot of experience, too. What levels are we getting to? 123 and 122. We are jumping up. Peerless heroes on top of that. I think that's reaching level 120. All right, four shards of Zemurian ore are obtained. Let's go get the last one. So we stand in the Geofront Sector D where fifth monster awaits us in this little hole here. Yet again, underneath the city, we really need to deal with stuff. Hello, Ernest, you color scheme. Hello, many of you. How have you replicated? Explain this. Well, that's annoying. Yeah, hit me twice as good. I kind of would like you to be further away from the rest of my guys, though, but it looks like I don't have to use a zero field at this rate. So if you know what I mean, I'm, I'm quite happy about that. Can I do anything that will get that double turn? No, by the look of it. I think it's that guy. No, it's not. Can I pull these guys away or at least point them away? Ooh! Actually successfully being able to move the guy. So their defensive value seem to be going up quite a bit. Don't they? Right, so we need to get a scan in. Let's just do a straight up analyze. We've got you coming out with a spell, but we have no clue what to really hit with at this point in time. So we'll hit the Fortuna. In fact, why not hit the double Fortuna? Seems like a great idea to me. Maybe have TO zero field on that double turn coming up. So zero delay. A demon warrior from another world, it uses a jet black sword to sunder life itself. Weakest to earth. That's a weird one for us. Water's not bad. 51 gauge B. Now, if there's a critical, of course, we just hit Wazi. But if these guys are physical guys, I think we should be relatively okay. It just depends how well we keep them on us. Okay, good start, good start. Genesis Flood, I don't know if it does less damage or more damage than Eschaton, but it seemed to do okay. Hand of Lightning is going to miss Lloyd a lot by the look of it. We just need to boost up his power now, really. And then, uh... Yes! Take our foes further away? I'm not actually really sure we can, but we'll do our best. Ooh. We get to hit this again. Let's try Eschatons following on from it, see how much damage that does. The ATS is already pouring away, sadly. This is a critical. So no matter what, the damage will be amplified. <laughs> uh, pretty tasty. Uh, let's just kill him. If you know exactly what I'm meaning, we could totally do it. I kind of don't want you to go next, really, but okay. Of course, we're missing the, the boost from Thingy, which we can't get on. You know, Thingy, that thing, Thingy. Uh, we probably won't be able to take them all out, but of course, we can always hit with a couple of S-Graphs here, there, and everywhere. I will walk in to get the normal attack. 
Because why not get 49 extra damage when we need it? Yeah. TOCP has been rocketing up the whole time. Ah, oh, it's a lot easier when they're melee foes, isn't it? I mean, I think the job is as done as it could possibly be. When you count in, I have this too. And that Wazi has ATS boost plus two. 50% at least. Yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> so basically on those enemies, I could do everything I ever would have wanted to do to them. All right, guys, are we reaching 123 or 124 in the case of Dio and Randy? Not far off for the others, but... We'll be fine. Two ceram powders for our trouble and another monster exterminated. Sumerian ore shard is claimed. You felt a surge of power as something awakened. Oh, don't tell me where then. Alright then, time to build Randy a better weapon. And with that, I now have access to three Sumerian weapons. The Deontic Abyss, 790 strength, range plus one, causes death blow 20%. A halberd made with a strange ore drags foes to the underworld. Uh, a fairly nice upgrade. Congratulations, strength boy. All right, then, let's find out what the hell was about. This would be what the hell is about. So as you can see, alongside Michelin, the wetlands of the Azura Tree, one of these spots is not like the others. The Scarlet Wetlands has now appeared. What is this about? Well, this place looks lovely. It's got music anyway. Hello! Not a golden chimera then. A red one. There is monster harboring untold power here. Why don't we fight it? The game's super boss. <laughs> Coming alongside some foes that are probably a little annoying, I'm not sure. It'd be nice to get a scan on you first of all, but I feel like getting defensives up first would probably be the best bet. So let's go with Burning Heart. We've got keepers, so hopefully these things will be inter well, interested in coming at Lloyd specifically. They are just the great Satans that we've already scanned before. Kind of want to make sure to point you a different direction if I can. Okay, air raid. That's good. It seems that Keeper works on you. We can get some cheap damage in. Alright, you are going to start casting arts to me. Okay. It's more annoying than not. So definitely enemies I'd like to take out if they're going to be doing that. Okay, well we can't really leave this guy to be on this attack. Uh, we have not got a scan yet. So we'll need that. I could just analyze it to get the scan and get the double turn. But I could have also zero fielded to get that. Got a critical coming up. A cryptid that appeared out of nowhere. It holds a powerful force within that it freely employs. Vermilion. Weakest to... Oh, it... It's a nice element to be weak to. It's one that we can't really bombard you with, but we're not going to be using water on these things anyway. So I guess we are going to be 
Nuking with Argent Arc, most likely. I mean, I could do Avalon Gate and just take the critical for free. That hits everyone. <laughs> okay, you can roar to everyone. Uh, should I just impede this guy and make sure he doesn't get this off? Considering I can hit... Yeah, I can run all the way around. Obviously, I would probably like to get the zero field on sooner rather than later, but that roar looks like it will easily break through that. That's some good damage. So as we take down the edge, surely if it's the same as a normal Golden Gamera. Should be... I think we should use burst. I've got this weird, weird feeling that I should use burst. Burst the bandit. I don't know why. It just feels like things gonna get worse before it gets better. <laughs> Weird that. Okay, in terms of turns I could take here. I could Trinity card. Oh my god, I can hit everyone if you're in the center. Well, I don't necessarily have to use burst then. It just depends on what the main guy might use. I still think I should use burst, don't get me wrong. So you're out of range for Lloyd to get the hit in. To be honest, a normal attack, because Raging Spin does a 20 delay and a normal attack does 17 delay. Just getting closer to your range and getting a whack in there. No reasons not to use burst. This is our super boss. We've already got the buffs up massively. So if Tio can get two Argent Arcs out, things aren't going to be very healthy afterwards. Yep, that's a lot of damage. This guy is nothing compared to the stupid Scarlet <laughs> Tom of the Finks. What the hell, you crap? The super boss is more about the mechanics of things. If you're in burst and they're never allowed to actually happen, then game over happens and you laugh. Correct? I don't know why he's like the highest damage I can really hit on him. I mean, Spark Dime has never really hurt me, has it? And that'll be the game. We didn't even have to use Zero Field. So this is it. This is the post game of Trails to Azir. Now, I understand that there is two rewards for defeating this boss. One if you defeat it on normal or lower. And one if you defeat it on hard or higher. Don't explode now, Lloyd's right next to you. Send those... Red crystals at me. That's the real true scary thing of this. Level 125 for everyone. 126 for Randy, though. Overachiever. And with that, we get one in a vermilion. The monster's exterminated. We obtain the Dawn Crown. The Dawn Crown, of course, in the traditional way of JRPGs, when you no longer need something to beat a thing, you get something to beat a thing. The Dawn Crown is prevents the ailment stat down delay. But if you beat it on hard or higher, which I actually thought I was on. <laughs> Wait a second. Did I? I actually thought I was running through this game on uh, hard. <laughs> but obviously I wasn't. Such is the way of things. Wait a second, I am. I guess only on Nightmare then. 
I guess the, the thing I was following was wrong. But there we go. We get that that prevents stat delays, etc. I'm a bit confused by this now. Prevents ailments, stat down, and delay. So basically, nothing can affect you. Apart from, of course, when it says prevents ailments, it doesn't pre prevent instant death, as I understand it. The other thing you can get is a Crater's Crown, which gives you strength, defense, ATS, ADF, plus 200, speed and movement, plus 10, accuracy and evasion, plus 20%. So it's a massive, massive stat stick where, you know, I'd probably just put it on Lloyd instead of an Evergreen. If you know what I mean, it gives him everything except the prevents faint sleep confused. But if he doesn't get hit anyway, 200 extra strength for counters seems pretty good. Pretty tasty indeed. But yes, that was our final boss. <laughs> that was the super boss. I guess you only get that on Nightmare, not for hard. But I will say... Thank you for joining me throughout this Let's Play. Of course, it's been a, a long, long run. And of course, another 28 hours to get through the game again to be able to get to the Super Boss in the first place was uh, quite a lot to go through. But I did it because, of course, we wanted those bonding events and we want the Let's Plays to be complete. Of course, we will have more trails in the future. From the date of this airing, Trails into Reverie is not long off where we will continue Crossbell story even more. Of course, Trails of Cold Steel. Sorry, I forgot the middle bit for a second then, because it's always changing. Also continues the story, but those Let's Plays are already up and live on the YouTube, so if you want to check them out, you can. But with Trails to Brazier coming with what I'd say, it was an interesting ending in the fact that it left me a little bit deflated. The reason is, is that about the time where we take on the towers and we take on Ouroboros, the, the big fight with Alienode and all that, about that time is where the game started to look elsewhere. Because Ouroboros were themselves. The game had already started to go, ah, but over here, ah, Erebonia, ah. So when other characters in the internal universe of the game start to look at a different area and they basically deem this thing like done and slash unimportant to them, their goals and desires as the organization that they are, uh, it kind of makes you go, ah, uh, look elsewhere as well. When you end the game, you know that things just haven't ended. The thing that's been alluded to for a long time, uh, the liberation of Crossbell has happened, but Crossbell is in trouble. It's just not concluded in the second game of a duology. We know it's to continue, and that's what Trails is. It's a long-running story. However, I'd argue that, of course, this is that makes Azure feel more like an FC than Zero did, where Zero actually felt like it had a story arc within it that actually really nicely, neatly concluded by the end of it. So Zero was a more self-contained game, but Azure didn't really give you the payoff of an ending because it was just looking elsewhere, looking to the future, off you go. Third had a solid ending and a solid story because it was a self-contained game while also giving you all the trails off into the future. SC, of course, was the end of its duo story arc, so it was all great and dandy. Zero again, as I said, it, had, it felt like it had a story within it that closed quite neatly, despite the fact that you know there's more. But Azure had that... Azure has... Erebonia hanging over it. Just like Crossbell has Erebonia hanging over it. But the ending just saying, ah, this happens, this happens, this happens, it wants you to move on the series. But it means that it just makes it feel a bit like, ah, we're at a stopping point, but we're not actually at an ending satisfactory point. That, that is for five more games for that to play out in. So hopefully you join me for those five more games. Remember, Cold Steel's there on the YouTube already. And Trails into Reverie will very start soon, shortly on the YouTube and on the Twitch. So, we're facing forward. Only forward for Trails from now on. We have all the backstory. All the little things that truly make a story rather than the big events. So, I hope you join me for what's to come. Thank you guys for watching the post game. I'll see you guys in the future and I'd love to hear your thoughts on what I thought about Azure after having a couple of weeks to sit on it, so to say. How do you feel about how this game ended versus everything else? Satisfying? Hmm? A little bit more FC-ish than SC-ish? Hmm? I would love to hear it. So I will see you guys round in the future. See you down the road.
that long, long trail. Bye-bye.